And welcome back to This Week in the USHL. Bernie Corbett with you. Glad you could join us. And we're very happy to uh, be able to catch up with the commissioner. We couldn't catch up with him last week. He was running a little too fast for us during the holiday week. And uh, Skip Prince, uh, always a pleasure. And uh, welcome back to the program, my friend. Bernie, it's good to speak with you guys again. And I'm sorry for uh, for last week. You're right. You, you couldn't <laughs> catch up with me, but I certainly spent enough time in airports that I can tell you. <laughs> That's right. Uh, exactly how much fast food is sold everywhere in America right now. <laughs> yeah, you've probably got them pretty well memorized. You've got like a diagram of the food courts in all the major airports around the country. I got food courts, restrooms, <laughs> uh, I got, I got uh, Admiral's Clubs, anything you want, I've got. <laughs> you know, that'll be, that'll be the next show. We'll have our own travel show. You and me, <laughs> Skip, will be also on our travel show. I thought you were ducking me for the Harvard Yale game, but that's another story we won't get into. Oh, now, see, now, that's a low, that's a low blow there. <laughs> Sorry. I had to bring it up. I was compelled. Coach Murphy now, it's, would. It's embarrassing <laughs> to us Yaleys when you lose to a junior college from Cambridge. You really hate <laughs> that's that. That's right. The Cambridge School of Upholstery. There you go. As Skip, uh, we talked about on-ice success the last time we had you on, and everybody was, uh, was uh, as, as you'd expect, uh, was uh, really uh, holding their heads up very high after the World Junior A Challenge success uh, with a team made up entirely of USHL players and USHL coaches behind the bench and uh, also uh, the success at the international tournaments of both the, uh, the 18- and 17-year-old teams. A uh, lot, of, lot of things to celebrate. Now, I want to take a little bit of a different turn tonight and uh, take a look at what's happened to produce some of those great on-ice accomplishments in terms of what's happening behind the scenes. It really is almost an arms race in your league right now to improve facilities. It's almost one-upmanship around the league as facilities improve by leaps and bounds. Well, I appreciate you know your uh, your focus on it because it really is one of those pieces of the puzzle that is critical and and yet sometimes gets overlooked. Uh, with the announcement last week that uh, the Omaha Lancers were going to build a new state of the art forty two hundred seat building in Omaha, uh, which uh, basically becomes their home. They will be its primary tenant, um, and that's a you know, it's a 20 to $30 million commitment from wow. combination of folks, including the Lancers, the city, and, uh, and, and the state. Uh, that becomes the third new building that we can announce in, in three years. Uh, Dubuque built its brand-new building for its return to the United States Hockey League. Fargo built the Urban Plain Center, now the, the Seals Arena, uh, prior to the 2008-2009 season. But there are nine other teams that have spent a significant amount of money uh, in the off season in order to be able to improve the facilities and make them just grade triple a quality indeed and it really does become a competitive advantage for the teams that are moving forward in those areas and as as a result i mean it you you you, the, the, you raise the bar and the other teams in order to compete they have to step it up in order to compete and that just makes for a much more attractive league for any uh, kid out there that's looking, any young hockey player that's out there, he knows that he's going to be playing, as you say, in grade-A buildings, home and away, right around the whole league. Well, it's a, it's a question, you're right, there's always competition, uh, but the competition is friendly, as we've talked about before. On the ice, uh, the competition is as fierce as any league that you'll ever find in any sport, but off the ice, the partnership has collectively recognized that in order to be the elite league that um, that we wish to be known as, it's necessary for us to make sure that the facilities are first tier. So to a certain degree, this is a challenge uh, to all of the member clubs to make sure that the young men who come into the league from the standpoint of all of their facilities, and that's not just on ice but off ice, their training right. and their weight rooms. Um, the, the quality of the facility itself, the quality of the ice. Um, it's, it's gone from, uh, I mean, I, I, Muskegon's got a 50-year-old building that has had seen pro hockey for, for most of those 50 years. Um, but, but I would suggest that it, it wasn't a professional standard. So now it's got a new locker room, a weight room, a player lounge, a video scoreboard. The same in Cedar Rapids. Uh, Kirk Brooks at the Vero Center in Kearney. When he bought the Tri-City Storm, looked around to a building that was only seven or eight years old and said it's got to be better. So he remodeled the luxury suites. He put a new replay system in. He put a new team store. 
upgraded the locker room. So we're doing it across the board. Um, we could list them one by one, but the collective effort is is what uh, is critical to us. In, in, indeed, raise, raise the uh, the level for all boats uh, on the water, as it were, and uh, make for uh, just an exemplary hockey experience, just to really make the hockey experience uh, just the same principle, really, Skip, as in college recruiting. I know from uh, the time I've spent at Boston University uh, what a difference it meant to recruiting to have a new building five years ago uh, as far as the uh, the ability to recruit and the ability to showcase your program and your operation. You're absolutely right. And, of course, as you use the term that it's a, it really is a, 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 an arms race, um, and the arms race in college certainly is mimicked to a certain degree by the things that are going on in, in juniors. Uh, but we want the young men to come in here and and realize that um, that it, it's changed. That the what they've done so far has given them the opportunity to play play in this environment. But I've probably been to four or five practice sessions in four or five different venues where the coach will at the end of the uh, at the end of the practice look around and say, you know, men earn this. A lot of people are working very hard on your behalf. Earn it. Give it back, and it's something that um, I think they recognize and appreciate. There's no question that uh, they love the locker rooms, but they they more just as much love the fact that it represents uh, a, a standard they've got to meet uh, that that we in turn are, are are seeing if we can get better at in in all 15 of our venues as well as at the NTDP. Hey, absolutely. To in, in in a nutshell, Skip, and you as the commissioner can look at the league, the the overall view of the league, its commitment that should be rewarded with a reciprocal commitment from the front office, as it were, and coaching staff to the players that are on the ice? Uh, absolutely. I mean, it's, uh, from our standpoint, we continue to believe every time we've stepped it up a notch, everyone has responded in kind. The quality of play has gotten better. The quality of player that's coming to the league has gotten better. The quality of coach has improved. Um, so facilities is one part of a puzzle that I know that those who are involved in hockey recognize has an awful lot of components to it, but it's, it's a critical one because you've got, if you're going to play like a pro, you've got to recognize that what surrounds you is, is professional and caliber and quality. And so we want our young men to be capable of walking into BU, um, or any, uh, collegiate facility knowing that this is something that they that they have worked to earn not that they deserve but right. that they've earned and continue to earn it every day it's an important piece of the puzzle and we think we're doing better at it than we've done before hey, absolutely if you want a, a guy uh, to respond play like an elite player you treat him as such and uh, you give him that opportunity and uh, with everything that's going on in the league skip my only suggestion is Keep those scissors handy for some ribbon cuttings. I'm sure there's going to be some other uh, movement. You mentioned Omaha's new building, 2012-13, and there'll probably be some other opportunities uh, around the league as uh, everybody continues to move forward. And, and thanks again for joining us, and uh, look forward to catching up with you again next week. Bernie, we look forward to it as well. Thanks for uh, taking the time with us as ever, and we'll look forward to next week as well. Skip Prince, the president and commissioner of the USHL as we catch up with the commissioner here on This Week in the USHL. Bernie Corbett here with you and want to uh, thank our guest tonight. First up was Jason Megner, our player profile, forward from the Cedar Rapids Rough Riders. Also want to thank Kevin Hartzell. He was in our coach's corner tonight, one of the veteran coaches in the league for the Sioux Falls Stampede. And catching up with the commissioner, of course, with the president and commissioner, no stranger to any airport in the contiguous United States, Skip Prince. Thanks very much for all of us here at This Week in the USHL, and be sure to join us again next week. This is Bernie Corbett saying good night, everyone.